On this short video, I want to discuss some of the customs that have to do with the dead and with mourning. And the reason for this video is in this week's reading, the weekly parsha of Vayechi, uh, we learn how Yosef, uh, when he saw his father die, fell on him and kissed him. And the question is, is this done today? Is this the right thing to do? In the previous parsha, Vayigash, we learned how when Yaakov was descending to Egypt and he had his last revelation when Hashem told him, don't worry, don't be afraid to go to Egypt, I will be with you. And among other things, he told him, Yosef Yashit, uh, Yosef will, a lot of translators understand it to mean close your eyes, meaning when you die. So it was hinted to Yaakov that he'll die in Egypt, but uh, Yosef will be around. He will not die alone. Yosef will be with you. He will close your eyes. There are other translations of this verse. Rajbam and some commentators understand it differently, but I will go by the most common translation. That the son closes the eyes of his father when the father dies. Is this again something that's done? Is this a normal thing to do? So I want to mention that in general, uh, we don't find a lot of uh, ancient uh, laws with regards to what is done and how burial should go and a lot of the things that we do find sometimes in the Tanakh, in the Mikra, in the, in the Jewish Bible, the Hebrew Bible, sometimes we find in the words of Hazal, there's of course a whole Masechet, a whole tractate, but it's not one of the standard tractates of the Talmud, uh, the commentary to the Mishnah, rather it's a separate tractate, what they call small tractates, minor tractates, they translate this. Um, they usually print them in the same volume as the tractate of Avadazara. There are a few minor tractates there. Sofrim, Sefer Torah, uh, Mizuza, all kinds of tracts. Gerim, there's a tractate about Gerim. These are very small tractates. And one of the tractates there is called Avel Rabati. Uh, the tractate that deals with Avilut, with mourning. And some of the laws come from there. And there's also a little bit of discussion on these topics in tractate Moed Katan, which deals with Chola Moed, but in the last peric, in the last chapter of the tractate, there is some discussion about mourning laws because it, 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 it touches upon the laws of mourning during Chola Moed. If somebody dies, let's say, during the uh, middays of the holiday, in the middle of Pesach, in the middle of uh, Sukkot, what to do? And therefore, it discusses the general laws of mourning. That's just about all we have. So there's not a lot of laws of mourning that we have, and some of the uh, specific customs that developed uh, around the burial of the dead are not from the ancient times. At least we don't have any proof that they're from ancient times. And on the contrary, we have some customs, as for instance, the two things that I just mentioned, that are not necessarily kept today, which used to be kept. We see in, in the Torah and even in, in the rabbinical sources that this is what used to be done, but it, for, for various reasons it's not done anymore. So that's the, the, the specific two customs that I just mentioned, closing the eyes of the father. In fact, a lot of the sources until even 200 years ago mentioned this idea, that ideally the son should close the eyes of his father. It says that in Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, for instance, used to be a very important code of Jewish law. Today also it's learned by lots of people. Today there are other books that are more popular, but Kitzur Shulchan Aruch was one of the most popular uh, books written for everybody, not a... Uh, work that's written for scholars, but written for everybody. It's a short Shulchan Aruch. And uh, Rav Shlomo Gansfried, who wrote it, writes that ideally the, the son should close the eyes of the father. So the fact is that it was practiced, even just recently uh, in Europe at least. And uh, the custom in some communities today not to do it is based on certain Kabbalistic teachings, which I'm not going to go into. But uh, it's not really commonly done by a lot of people today, yet it used to be quite a common custom until very recently. Another interesting, of course, question is whether you're allowed to kiss the dead, and in particular parents like Yosef did with his father. Again, same story. You have the source in the Torah, you have the sources in rabbinical times that this is, used to be done. But then for various reasons it stopped, or at least in some communities stopped being done. Sefer Hasidim was a work sort of mystical it's a very interesting work it's a very unusual work there are actually various versions of this work there are various uh, 
Nusa Hayot. Uh, so the Sefer Hasidim suggests not to do it for children. When a person's children die, has he shouldn't kiss them. Uh, now, it's a question if that the same applies to other relatives. And Sefer Hasidim claims it's even sakana, it's actually dangerous. Whatever the case may be, today apparently it's not done that even children shouldn't kiss their parents uh, who, who are dead. Even though we see that in the Torah and even in times of Hazal, this was still practiced. So for some reason, these types of things, I mean, it's not a real law. It's not like you have to do it. But certain customs surrounding the burial of the dead that appeared are not necessarily ancient customs. But various customs appeared and they're written in the books and people follow them. I'll give a couple of examples of customs that are very well known. Everybody who ever dealt with who was in a, on a burial or orthodox burial would probably know about this custom and yet I haven't found any ancient sources for it. It's not exactly clear what the reasons are for these types of things. So one example is when they uh, when they throw the earth into the grave, they flip the spade. Everybody saw that, that that's what's done, at least in the beginning. Why would it be done? So an explanation usually given is that it's as if we don't really want to part with the dead, so therefore we use the spade in an unusual manner, kind of as if we're hesitant to really quickly cover the, the dead with the earth. We don't want to really let them go, but we're forced to do it, so we have to do it, we do it hesitantly. I don't know, it's not really a convincing explanation, but maybe that's the reason, maybe there was some other reason. So to conclude, I would say that a lot of things with regards to burial are not necessarily full, full, full-fledged full laws. It's just certain customs that develop. Uh, people follow those customs, of course, but they may be not necessarily very old. And in terms of the ancient customs, many of them, in fact, uh, went away with time for various reasons. And uh, uh, in particular, for instance, uh, the... Um, way the Avelim used to always wear black. That was the uh, the custom in the times of Hazal. And pretty much nobody else wore black, which is interesting. They were all, at least men in Haredi circles, always wear black, so it's not exactly clear. But uh, today, the the black no longer represents a, uh, uh, a color of mourning. But it used to be that way. Uh, people didn't wear black suits. They had uh, various types of uh, clothing that was not necessarily black, and the black associated only with mourning. We see that in Tanakh, we see that in Hazal, many, many places in Hazal, that wearing black represented that. And uh, um, by the way, the, even the burial itself, the Talmud concludes that it's a mitzvah to bury, and we sort of learn it uh, with regards to actually wicked people, interestingly. When the Torah describes a wicked person who sinned, and uh, sinned so badly that he was given a death sentence that he should be buried in this, uh, quickly enough, right, within the same day. It's a whole uh, mitzvah in, in Jewish law to bury quickly. But what exactly burial is, that is uh, not as, as clear. We see, for instance, that Yosef used uh, some kind of bo- bo- uh, embalming for both his father and later uh, ordered it apparently to be done for himself. And this is not done today at all. And in fact, there are actually some Hazal who criticize Yosef for doing it to Yaakov. There are apparently different ways of embalming and maybe some of the ways would not be technically forbidden according to the letter of Jewish law, but it's definitely not done by in Orthodox circles. And in fact, at some point in reform circles in America, maybe close to a hundred years ago, there was a tendency to embalm. Today, a lot of them do cremations, which are definitely against the Jewish law. But uh, uh, at that time, a lot of them wanted to be embalmed. And uh, we see at least that Yosef did this to Yaakov, although, like I said, it's not necessarily a good thing that what he did, and some of the sages in the Midrashim criticized him for it. So on this, I'm going to end. My point of this short lecture was to explain a couple of verses in, uh, in the last two parshiot, as well as to understand that a lot of the customs that have to do with burial of the dead are relatively late customs, and for various reasons, some of the older customs actually uh, are not practiced today. And if you like this video, please press like.